prayer now before we sing another song, and uh, we need some prayer tonight. <laughs> Miss Judy, would you want to take us before the Lord tonight? It's such a pleasure to be here. Blessed Redeemer, we're so happy to be back in your house again. Amen. Thank you so much for all those that were here this morning and, and hope that they return time and time again to be in the house that you have provided for us. Now we ask that this service be what we need to hear with our ears, to feel in our hearts, to know in our souls. Give Pastor Sherry the words that are to be a comfort to us. And as we pray. Progress with the rest of the week. We ask that you bless each and every one, those of us who were here and those who couldn't be here with us tonight, and that we bring us all back for another worship service and Bible study on Wednesday. In the name of your precious and holy Son, we pray these things. Amen. 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 All right, yes, we're going to do 256, which is the next page. It is well with my soul. I just stand here so I can hear the music. 256.
have a thank you or a testimony they want to share with us tonight before Ms. Sherry comes. We'll have time to do that. Just praise the Lord, everyone. Thanks. I do. Yesterday was such a blessing to me. I love gathering together. I love, you know, fellowshipping with my sisters and brothers wherever we are. And we had 16 with us yesterday. And that wasn't all of our church members. There were some who just couldn't come. And it was awesome, you know, just to see those that come in. And the church blessed these ladies. You know, there's, I'm just going to say anonymously, there were some givers. And it blessed everyone. I'm just really thankful for what God's doing in this church. We started our teen class this morning. I had six people in there. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I know God's going to do great things in the days to come. This is just the beginning. And I'm excited. I'm excited. This is just the beginning. It is. Oh, we don't let the Lord have it for us, do we? This is great. Amen. This is good, I'll tell you. Anybody else have something they want to share? I was thankful for the service this morning. Nice numbers, seeing some people that hadn't been in here for a long time. And good message. And I was real thankful for it. That was good. That was good. I had a good week. Was it last week we went to the picnic, Carol? Last weekend. Yeah, and that was a blessing. I went to the Air Force picnic. They hadn't had one for years. It's been bad. And, of course, I got down there. Everybody looked old. But <laughs> 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 so I'm telling you, say, cast your bread on the water. Yeah. And you'll come back. After That's, right. That's right. And your bread can be lots of different things. That's right. And I had a fellow come up to me. He looked middle ways. He was losing his hair. And uh, I looked at him. I didn't know who he was. And uh, then he told me who he was. He was one of my students when I was oh. teaching a practice class. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just want to thank you for teaching me. What a blessing. Right. And now he's teaching. <laughs> you made a difference. I touched somebody's life. That's right. That's right. And you don't do it for the money because it no. didn't pay anything. No. And you know how teaching is. You study and you study and you yes. do more. And you know more than anybody else, hopefully. Well, we anybody that tries to study. <laughs> but yeah. I thought, you know, such a blessing. Yeah. Your bread does come back when you cast it out there. And it can be multiple things that you cast out there. That's right. Just an act of kindness. That's right. Just something you do for somebody. You know, and they remember. And you forgot about it. <laughs> anybody else? Just thankful for the Lord and thankful for His salvation, and yes. and even in, in our worst days, it's a good day in the Lord. Isn't that that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. You know, the sun doesn't always shine, does it? No. But the Lord says, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. I'll be there right with you." That's right. And uh, you know, we we have lots of troubles, and Paul, the apostle, went through so much. But he had an attitude. He had a good attitude. You know, the Lord gave him a thorn in the flesh. And he asked what, three times to be, for that to be removed. But the Lord told him, you know, my strength, your witness will be made perfect in my strength. And so he had the right attitude. I don't always have that attitude. When things go wrong, But Paul had the attitude. If I could have that, that'd be great. Well, we just ask Miss Sherry to come and let's ask the Lord to bless her. She comes. Heavenly Father, we want Thank to you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord. Let's pray for the children. We call your word children, tonight. Lord. It will be worth it all someday. Just Lord. be with our sister Lord. now. She feeds us. Use her as your vessel. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Mother. Give us open and receptive hearts. We love her. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to share. Oh, yeah. I'm okay today. I'm good.
There's times when you know you just need it, you know, and there's times you're, you feel strong and good. So I'm thankful today is a good day, even, even in our days that we're weaker. Those are still good days. Yeah. Because we're still able to do what the Lord asks of us to do, and, and we go in His strength. And, you know, I, I know um, we, could, we could just have our brother just go on preaching here because he was doing a good job. He was. He was. He were. I'm serious. Um, you know, I know Paul had his days. He did. He did. He, he did. Trials. But he just kept marching along with him. He didn't give up. He was just persevering. And, you know, because he remembered what he did before. And how to live with that. That's a hard thing to say. I mean, how you persecuted the things that were true and find out, you know, what I did. So now I've got to make a difference and I've got to change and I've got to do this. And I think that if, if we could be a pinch of what he is, if I could just even be a, a, a little pinch of that, uh, that would be the blessing. Because our heart needs to be, God, what do you want me to do? But if the Lord gives you a message, anytime you just holler and you just go with it, I'm serious. I'm serious. God gives people messages, and it's for the church. And you don't always have to hear me or Rick all the time, but if God gives you a message, there's a purpose for that. And I'll I'll move over. Glad that I will, because when it's the Lord, you better move over. <laughs> yeah, you better be be sensitive to that, to His Spirit. And I would just love to hear Him go on and on. Paul is one of my favorites. Paul yes. and Peter. And Mo, well, Moses, definitely. Um, but today, you know, Sister Judy doesn't know how she affected this lesson. When the Lord works with me on messages, you know, I, I have, you know, it's all through the week. I'm always thinking about, praying about what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to bring out? What does the church need? And sometimes it's not till the day before. He actually says, this is what I want you to do. And yesterday... Um, Judy and I and the girl, some of the girls that were still left there were talking about the ladies' ministry. And she she told me that the ladies' ministry used to be called Rebecca's Sisters. And that wouldn't leave me. I kept thinking, I know all about Rebecca, and I, I she's, she's a mighty, she was a mighty one. She, she was precious along with Esther and all the other, Naomi, Ruth, all the others. But when he, when he works with me on a message, it's like, that's it. And so I had to get into Rebecca, to research what her name meant. meant. And one of the, the descriptions was a knotted cord. And I thought, that's odd. What does he mean by that? What, did, what does this name mean by that? So I went into scriptures and, and found uh, scriptures about cords, and I looked at pictures, and I was researching why, would, why the knotted cord. And... Um, I, I have to thank Judy because God uses different people. You know, you could be, and I study every day, whether it's morning or night or during the night, whenever the Lord has me, you know, I'm always, it's, my mind's always, always that way. And I have to give myself permission to play or to play a game I do. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's okay. Great, great time. But um, I have to thank Sister Judy for that. And she wasn't doing anything on purpose. We were just talking. And the, and the Lord moved through her. And um, that's the way we have to be um, in a church that we, we need to recognize when the Lord is working through someone else and be sensitive always to how he's going to move and stir you into whatever he needs you to talk about. But with Rebecca, I'm not going to go into her life, but we're going to expound on the knotted cord. And if we can go to Colossians chapter 2. And I hope this um, I hope this message really touches someone, someone's heart. I know that uh, everyone that's here is going to hear this and people across the U.S. And, and, and in the other countries, those that are going through crisis and situation, that I hope that this message will encourage and help deliver someone from fears and, and situations of life, that they can have peace in the Lord, to know His Word. Because it's through His Word that deliverance has come and healings come. It's through His Word that our mindsets are healed 
and changed, and we've got to know where to go. But as a church, we got to know how we need to uh, uh, show the world who we are, who Jesus is through us. And we've always got to be mindful of that. But Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, says, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church of Laodicea, and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is in Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Pastor Rick mentioned this morning about believing. You know, to believe, that's an action verb, isn't it? We have to understand, what, what does it mean to believe? Well, what does the word God say? And that's vital, because we know that once saved, always saved, there's no such thing. There really isn't. It's a daily walk with him. But to believe, we must understand what we believe. We know we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but what does he want us to know? And we search that out, and this church searches those things out. You guys are diligent and faithful to the Lord. And it's important to help teach others that this is important to know, that that is where we go to to find wisdom and understanding, and the Lord will give us that wisdom and understanding if we seek after it. But that kind of touched my, you know, when Pastor Rick was talking, I was thinking, okay, he's going a little bit where I'm going to go tonight. <laughs> he is, he's going there. But it says, let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. And you will overflow with thankfulness. When I go back to verse 2, be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. That spoke volumes to me. We need to understand the love of God that he has for us and accept that first knowing. We need to understand how deep he loves us or how else can we allow him to flow through us, to allow his love, to freely flow and to reach others. There are so many in this world that have a distorted view of what love is because of abuse, families that are um, a mess, they, their parents were raised up in a mess, so they raised their children up in a mess, and their, their children are raised up, you know, the, the mentality, um, I call it the welfare mentality sometimes. That could be in a spiritual sense the same way, and, and traditions. You know, the same, same, it kind of ties in a little bit there. But we as the church must be at a place where we allow that true love of God to flow through us. We, we need to teach those that are coming in our churches. Yesterday was a beautiful example. People that may not ever come to our church or may have come often, you know, and, and once they're with us, they feel that real love. Those people that came, these ladies and even a young man, a son of one of them came. They felt your love. They did. They had a good time. It was beautiful. It, I, I was just, I was just soaking it in. I was watching, you know. And I think we need to. I was watching, just seeing how how we were being knitted together in strength and love. And those that came know that we're still going to be here. We're going to invite you next time. We we want to love you. And if you don't go to our church. God knows where you're going to be at, but our the best thing that we can learn to do is love. Amen. That has to be the purpose in our heart, yes. to love as Jesus loved. We've got to get past the physical appearance, the you know all the things that the world teaches us that is so important, and even some churches that teaches are so important. We got to get back to the basics, don't we? Quit making it so hard to live for God. Quit making rules that are so demanding that has nothing to do with the way Jesus was as he walked on this earth. It was the Pharisees. That was their heart, wasn't it? And we've got to be careful that we don't pick up at any time that same critical spirit. We've got to give love. Love. When 
one time some, a pastor had asked me why I put up with some of the things that I put up with. And um, I had to say, well, I love that person. That's, that's my husband. He may be wrong. The Bible says love covereth a multitude of sins. And I knew what I was asked to do in that marriage by the Lord. And he doesn't ask everybody to do those things, not, to, not in this depth. But we've got to remember that with people, love covereth the multitude of sins. If we have someone come in that, that is a prostitute, a drug dealer, or, and we know they've been in the paper and all these things, are we going to look over at them and just, you know, let's move over here? They've killed someone or they, you know, whatever it is. We've got to understand that. Not to look at what we know is on the outside, but to love as Jesus Christ loved. He loves that person. They're a mess, but it's only through the hope of God and His Word. Thank goodness they're sitting in the pew. Amen. If they sit in your seat, yes. say, "Here, you can have this whole pew. I'll give it to you. Just, you know, we'd love to have you. We're, we're glad you're here." I have seen people get mad because someone sat in their seat, <laughs> and they would go to that person. And say, you know what? You're sitting in my seat. I sat here since I came here 20 years ago, and this is my seat. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But it's <coughs> and and you know some some people get the mindset of I can't handle change, but we've got to be willing to change. We can't have our feet planted so deep in the in the sand and the ground, or our heads planted in that we're not going to budge because God will make us budge. Especially with that kind of spirit. Don't you tell me what I gotta do. I know what it is. You know, that's a that's a prideful spirit. And we all have to be careful of that, don't we? So we have to teach people how to love, and that's by example. In all that we do, wherever we are. It's sometimes hard when someone's really hurt you and devastated you. And it, whether it's your child or a child or brother or sister or someone in the church or a neighbor, it, you, know, you have to ask God, help me to love that person. Help me, because I've been hurt. you got to give that to him. And you got to love past that, don't you? That could be hard. And they may have just about destroyed your whole life. I, you know, my husband and I have been through that. Almost. It's just a fine line. And... Um, God put someone in the midst of us and they said, you know, encourage me to just wait. Just wait. Just God will take care of it. And he and he did. He did. Not the way we would we know it should be, because but in the world that's the way it is, but in with God it shouldn't have to be that way. That someone chooses what they do. But he will at times back up. Not that he don't love them, but he allows things to happen in families to stir someone, to try to get through to them, to try to deliver them. And sometimes their pride is in the way, and God can't do anything, and you can't do anything. You can't fix it. You can't make someone look for God. You can't make someone make it right with people. And that's a hard thing. So God, help me to love. You know, help me to forgive. And I don't want anything in the way. we got to do that every day, don't we? Mm-hmm. we got to teach these young ones that are coming in here, this is how we do it. I realize your mom or dad might have done this to you or whoever, you know, if somebody's come through a break or a break or, you know, horrible situations in time. But we're going to give them the strength and the tools to know how to come through it and how to walk through it. And it's going to take everyone. It's that love. That love that God wants to move through us in order to teach others. And they may struggle and they may struggle maybe two years. They may still deal with things three years, but you keep on loving them. You keep teaching them by example. And God will be, and God will get them there. He will. As long as they're still in the midst and they still want to know and they still want to be there. Uh, I was looking at uh, verse 3. It says, in him lie, lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We have to teach our kids. We've got to study. We've got to read. We've got to discuss this. We've got to talk about this. What does this mean? 
you know, do you ask them if you have any questions. I know in Sunday school today I asked them, it, and I told them, if you ever are reading something and you want to know what it means, don't just let it go. If you want to call anybody here or call me, we'll help you understand it. But we've got to teach them how to look into things. Give, give them tools to research in the Bible, to understand what these stories of these characters, these real men and women of God, that they're not, just not a story. This is true. These are people just like you and I that went through a lot of hardship, as we do, but in a different sense. Their, their whole lifestyle is different than ours. And we've got to be able to teach them to worship, to pray. Again, that's examples, isn't it? When they watch you, and they're watching us, they really are. And I, some of them sit towards the back, and they're watching us. And, you know, many pastors make their use sit up in the first two pews. They can't see anybody from there. I realize that more can go on back there and be let go in the back, but they are seeing the adults stand up, raise their hands, sing, worship. They're not being stubborn and planted. They even come up for prayer. They're watching us. Because this is the right way to do it. They see the worshiping team, the worship team come up here and sing with all their heart. And the, the things that they speak and in this church, I love I love the hearts. Because when anyone speaks here, what what in whatever you know area that they're in, it's always real. It's from the heart, and I love to hear the prayers. I love to hear each step of the way our service is set up. I love seeing how God uses people in different ways. It's a must. You don't need my phone. Money. You don't need Pastor Rick's thumb on you. You know what God leads you to do, and that's what we've got to allow. We've got to show these kids or new adults that come in. This is the way real church should be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we've got to be that example. They're coming out of churches that are so uh, controlled, and, and we, we've experienced that. So we understand it. Some of you have been through life in different situations, different pastors, different things. And so you understand that being lorded over and feel like you, you can't speak or you can't have a, an opinion or, you know, or you're cast to hell or you're a backslidden person. That's not real church. We can't have that here. We can't, and we don't. We don't. And that's what I'm thankful about. But we're teaching the kids. We're teaching people that walk in your adults that don't know what church is all about. And they're watching. Or they have bad experiences. And they're watching. You know. So we need to teach them to worship. We need to, them to see us. Sorry, I'm moving and I'm creaking here. We, hopefully it didn't get on there. But um, we need to teach them that we're, we open our Bibles. Or we're watching the scriptures up here and we're intense. I mean, people aren't sitting fumbling, playing with their, you know. I've seen people in churches that play with their phones and talking to their neighbor the whole service and it's just chaos wherever they're at. We don't have that here. We don't. We have people that have a heart after God. And so you are great teachers. Yeah, I want you to know that. We have to continue to be great teachers. Even in our worst of days. Worst of days. So we're teaching. And we're teaching each other. teaching each other. And it's, I, I believe that's a command from God to be witnesses to the world. We are. We, we have, it doesn't matter who we are, we're all ministers unto God. He's called each and every one of you. And whatever giftings you have, he wants to use you in those giftings. And no one step in the way of that. But to be able to freely flow in a church service and in your home, in your life, wherever you go, that's that's God's will. So we need to teach ourselves, allow the Word of God to teach us, and to teach our young people, and any visitor that walks through that door, that we're here to love them. That pure love, and that's what they've got to feel from us, and and they do. Okay, if if, and I'd have to be honest. If there ever was a situation, I'd have to try to help someone with that. 
and we may have those situations down the road. And we can lovingly, you know, counsel. And you all are, that God allows all of us to do that, okay, as children of God, as ministers of God. Lovingly counsel someone, okay, that's the key. Not be critical, but lovingly. And that teaches them to also do the same towards someone else. We've got to be careful. The Bible speaks of those that will deceive us. And it's everywhere. You can listen on the radio. You can see it on TV. Um, I don't believe in this wealth ministry. I'll say it in that way. I, you know, the, I, I believe that God wants to bless us in every way. But that's not the target. That's not the purpose. Is it? Our purpose is to get to heaven. And he will take care of us. If he if he made the door open for all of us to be wealthy millionaires or you know, whatever whatever people are shooting for, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose, you will. Because that's all you're gonna think about is the money you got, the cars you're driving, the jewelry you're wearing, the clothes you're wearing, you're gonna lose sight, and that's how the enemy plays in money. Why would the Bible say money is the root of all evil? If he wanted us to be all millionaires, why? Yes, some would have a right heart. And some may, you know, they'd be givers and they'd be taking care of things and they'd, you know, help the city and the, you know, people of needs. And thank God there are people that can do that. But there are those that would lose their soul over money. And, and that kind of ministry, I want to back away from. And then I hear it, or I see a point of that, you've got to back away from. Don't listen to that. That's a spirit. We've got to be careful because it will try to entwine you, you know, into that thinking system. And that, that's not God. In number seven, verse seven, it says, Let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. If we are rooted and grounded, if we do believe what the Word of God says, that He is our deliverer, He is our healer, He is the way maker. If we believe those things, then we're going to trust Him. Our flesh gets in our way, and I have Pastor Rick talking. Our flesh will want what it wants, when it wants it, and how we want it, and, and how you know how specific things should be. And some people, if we don't get what we want, then we're going to throw a fit. We can't have that, can we? We've got to deal with this flesh because we like to be comforted. We like to be pampered. Don't we? We would just like to be on an island far away. <laughs> and just forget the world. Maybe when we get to heaven, I don't even believe that because... Those that are raised up, we're going to be overseers up there in, in time. So we're not going to be just laying around on that and walking on that gold, those gold streets and just playing on the clouds and just, you know, running and jumping. And that'll be fun. I'll probably do it for a little bit until he tells me what I'm to do. But there's not, we've got a special place in heaven for us. So down here, we can't get mixed up with all this stuff, can we? We gotta stay rooted and grounded in the word and not let anything deter us. And it will try. I told the kids downstairs today, you know, sometimes we think our parents just don't know really nothing. And they're our worst enemy. And I know when I was a teenager, I thought I knew it all. My parents didn't know nothing. And oh how wrong I was. Though inside I knew they were right. I knew what I was doing was wrong. I didn't get I wasn't I didn't run away. I didn't steal things. I didn't cuss and do all those things. But I wouldn't let go of someone, you know, which was wrong for me. And my mother and father were right. But I fought it all the way. That was that was my downset. And that hurt my mother's heart. I made her cry. And that I'll never forget that. We need to listen. We need to obey. We need to treasure God's word. And it's not hard to obey when we believe in him, when we believe in something. 
we got to get past our distorted thinking. And then the enemy's all day long, and I try to explain this to the kids. He's in there all day trying to make you think negative about your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister and other people. And I said, yes, some people are doing wrong. They do wrong. And, and you're right at being a little upset about that. But we've got to let God work with them. And see, this is what we do. We teach whatever age it is, whether it's elderly, whether it's you know middle age, young people, God's going to use you to help people every day, whether it's on the phone, whether it's at their house, or at the store. He's using you now. I know he is. He's using you now. If you're on Facebook, Use it for the glory of God. If you're on, I don't know, there's all sorts of sites, Twitter and all that. Use it for God's glory. Period. Because those sites are very dangerous. They're very dangerous. There have been kids that are bullied and they die too soon because of being bullied in situations that grow and expand. And that's just what the enemy's game is. You say one thing on there. So we've got to teach on Facebook. Teach people. And it's by your conversations on there. They may not hear you audibly, but what you write goes to everyone. You know, you can protect yourself in many ways, but whoever sees it, whether it's a friend or a friend of a friend, they see your message, and it matters. It matters. I have to get on one of my older daughters sometimes. She, it just... Sometimes your dad comes out of her sometimes and she, she gets hot under the collar and somebody might have done something wrong. I love her. And I told her, I said, you gotta calm down. It's gonna be all right. Just pray for them. Pray. And she's learning. She's in, she's in church and she, she's doing good. Um, but she's human. And we again, we've got to teach. We've got to teach. So we've got to teach people how to become rooted. What did it take for you and I to be rooted? Learning to pray. Learning how do I study my Bible? What is it that I need to do? Where should I go? You know, teaching them about faithfulness to service as church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Some people have to work and they can't. There's not some kind of choices. And you have to take care of your families. I'm not going to put my thumb on anybody that has to work. I'm not going to do that. You, you teach through love. Nobody's going to be drawn by anger and judgment, are they? You cannot draw anyone to that. But by honey, which is love, you'll draw somebody. Just keep teaching. Teaching. I was looking, as I said, looking at, at different things on the internet. The knotted cord. You know, why was Rebecca called the knotted cord? Now, what is the knotted, knotting, uh, found the Chinese knotting cord? And it says it's a round cord made from nylon that is braided and not twisted. It has a core cord running straight down the middle, which helps give the cord its stiffness and maintain its shape. It's a strength, okay? The grip that holds the knot tightly and the ends can be sealed with a flame or thread burner. I was thinking flame. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. You know, that he's the center. That's a, that center thread. And Rebecca's faith and her strength came from the Lord. She was strong. Though she made, she made bad choices sometimes. So did we. They made bad parental choices. She did. She did. And we, we can even do that in our own, with our own kids. But she had the strength of the Lord. She was sensitive to his spirit. She was sensitive to his spirit. And I could, I could see that. You know, she believed in the Lord God. She trusted in Him. She was chosen by God. And He made her strong as that thread of faith, of faith, God in the midst of her life. His spirit burning both ends and sealing that, His love for her. As a church, we need to take it a little bit farther. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two 
two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if prevail against, if one or prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three cord, threefold cord is not quickly broken. I'm thinking of a threefold cord here. You as a Christian, you have Jesus Christ in the midst. That's one cord. You're the cord. Then you have your church as a cord. That's a strong threefold cord as long as you stay in safety, right? In the midst of that cord and you don't let go. It's when we let go. That's when problems come. When we start, you know, stop praying a little bit. I stop reading my Bible. I see it. It's there. You know, I believe in the Bible, but I don't have time. You know, we start using excuses. All Sunday morning comes and, oh, I'm just too tired. I need to sleep. So I'm going to sleep. Sunday night comes. Oh, well, i got to get up early in the morning. You know, these, these excuses start coming in. We start telling ourselves, it's okay. Nobody will miss me. And that's a lie, isn't it? We do miss them. We do. They're becoming weaker, though. Those that have left. For whatever purpose, they are out there struggling alone. And we as a church need to encourage them and strengthen them. We need to go and lift them up and help them. Because if the enemy's gotten into their mindset and playing a game and speaking lies to them, we've got to help them to see truth. That we love you and you come back anytime. We're not letting go of you. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be there for you. And when you choose to come back, we're going to be we're going to be that strength. But when, when that happens, we have to repent, don't we? Because we let go of the things that we know to do is right. We let go and allow negativity to come in. And there's not every situation is a wrong situation when somebody <coughs> does leave. Let's say it that way. Because I've had to walk in that. I've had to separate and thank goodness I did or I wouldn't be here. So I'm talking about the situation where someone's faith is becoming low and distorted <coughs> thinking comes in. That threefold cord becomes frayed, don't they? They unwind themselves from that cord. They do, don't they? From the church and from Jesus Christ that planted them here. They unwind. So that threefold cord becomes weaker. Their strand of it becomes very weak. And this is something to think about in the spiritual sense. And think about those that may be missing, that may have been, you know, very faithful. And situations of life came in. They've been discouraged. Don't let them go. Don't, don't quit praying for them. Don't treat them as, you know, a horrible sinner or anything. Don't treat them in any way except by love. At all times. Love them. we got to lift them up. We need companions, don't we? Yesterday just proved it even more. I need my sisters. I need my brothers. I need my church. My strength is in this church. Your strength to me. I hope I am strength to you. It matters that we're together, doesn't it? It matters. I need that companionship. I need that fellowship. So if I need it, I know you do too. It's vital. You know, the, the scriptures, a lot of people use the threefold cord, mostly in marriage ceremonies. But it, it's it's more true even in daily life. And as I said, it's yourself, your church, and God in the midst. Okay, it's not just through marriage. Marriage is very important, and God needs to be the center of that marriage. Or it will fail. It will fail. If that cord in the middle that keeps a hold of us doesn't. It holds us and keeps us strong. We're committed one to another. And that's the same thing for our church. We've got to be committed. And what is my purpose? My purpose is in being 
in the midst of a church where God has placed me. You know, this is for all of us to, to understand. I've got to plant my feet there. I've got to be a part of it. I've got to be an encourager, one that lifts up, one that teaches and strengthens just as well they do the same for me. We are united in that three chord, what is it, three chord fold, together, committed to one another. That's what it's about, isn't it? Being committed through the tough seasons, the wonderful seasons, and every season, I'm committed to these people. I'm committed to Christ. And that has to be our heart. I'm committed to my family. I'm committed to wherever God puts me in. That through him, I can do and be a follow through the purpose that he's asked for my life as well as yours. I'm committed. Let's go to um, Proverbs 11. Then we just have the one. One last. I know I've talked too much. <laughs> but it's important that we teach. Okay. I know you've been in a long time, and you may have been in a lot longer than I've ever been. You know, I, I came in with the Lord in 1984, and some of you probably... You know, you, you've heard these things, but somebody on that, across the airways, may never have heard this. And I think we, as a church, need to be encouraged, don't we? Because you've been doing it for a while. And maybe it's a reminder. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. A church... We are all committed to one another. We counsel each other, don't we? We do. Yesterday we talked about um, somebody had prayer needs. And um, if someone wanted it more personal and just me to see it, and, or others, you know, it just depends on their situation. Because it is important. Any one of you can counsel someone. God gives you wisdom. His anointing is on your life. If you seek his wisdom and understanding, you'll be able to help that person. So it is open. We are a church. Many counselors gather strength to our life, don't, don't they? Many counselors that have the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, his spirit upon them, his anointing, and not walking in their flesh, but in the spirit. That's when there's safety in that, in that safety in numbers. There's protection. There's strength, there's encouragement. It's when there isn't. That's a dangerous thing. They detach themselves even farther, don't they? When you feel like you've lost touch of your church. And I'll share I'll share a little bit about Sister Lynn. I talked to her the other day, and she has been very, very ill. And she had her surgery. But because she's so far away, she's starting to feel detached from us. And so I call her. I know it's not because of anything somebody's done, but because the enemy's playing with her mind. He is. He loves her. God loves her. And he has a purpose for her here. And I know he's called her here, and she knows that. But he's playing. And I assured her, nobody has let go of her. That we love her, we're praying for her, and that was the enemy's plan. And she, she was so thankful for that. So if anyone could send cards and just lift her up to say, you know, we really miss you. Because I know you do. That's the key. Because the enemy's out to destroy any of us in this church. So we got to use wisdom. Don't we? we got to know when that negative voice comes in, that's not God. It could be my flesh saying these things. But it's not God. God will tell you to love that person, to take care of them, to encourage them, lift them up. The last scripture, 1 Corinthians 10. Chapter, chapter 10, verse 12. In the NIV it says, So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. In the King James Version, it says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Be careful with your spirit. Becoming prideful. Thinking, let's say if the prostitute came in here and sat down. And in your heart, I would never do such a thing. I, I, I would never. I'll never be guilty of that kind of thing. Be careful, because you will fall. I, I learned that when I was in that critical 
spirit and a wrong beliefism. I fell pretty hard. And that same thing reminded me what I said. Shame on me. I paid a heavy price for that. My own ignorance. I knew that. So I can say that to you. Be careful that spirit of pride. And it. I don't believe it's going to be here. But people will fall in that. The minute you think you are so assured in Christ and you've got it all together and you know it all, it's going to be up right on your nose. We gotta have humility. We need real love and humility. We gotta take care of the sheep, don't we? You as well as me. We gotta take care of the sheep that God gives us. Take care of one another and help each other grow. And as I said, you're a strength to me, and I know, and I hope I'm a strength to you. Because we're down together by the court. Committed to one another. And I'm sorry I've taken so long. But I hope I've encouraged someone and maybe reminded someone of something and maybe helped you see maybe people that you're dealing with or working with that it gives you a little bit more to work with to help them. But remember, we're always teachers to each other. My husband teaches me. Many times I listen to him and watch him and I know I teach him sometimes. And we're committed to where God puts us. And uh, I'm just thankful for that. Let's all stand. Carol, do you know, have thine own way with that song called Thine Own Way? We can sing it a cappella. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And we're just, I just want you to just worship the Lord in this song. And then you know, you're dismissed in Jesus. I pray that that you've been blessed today.
sources of life, strength, joy, peace, God, when we're walking with you, then we can uh, be a light to our generation. Amen. I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, bind us together yes. with the bonds of